Yo, what's up, bitches? It's your boy, Passion9, the drunk otaku. What's happening? I just watched five new currently airing anime shows, and I liked it them. I liked it them a fair bit. Yeah, that never happens. It never happens. I find five currently airing new anime shows. I've seen one episode of each, and I have to say, they're cool. I actually liked them. So let's let's get this started here with this one show I watched called VTuber Legend. And how I went viral after forgetting to turn off my stream. And yeah, the premise is exactly what the title says. This chick is a VTuber, and she's streaming one night and forgets to turn off her stream. And then everybody, all of her viewers, get a look at, like, you know, her real self, who chugs beer and says naughty things while watching other streamers and uh, listening to ASMR and falling asleep while she does so and everybody hearing her snore. And it's pretty hilarious. I laughed. I laughed a lot at this freaking episode. I laughed so freaking much because they nailed they nailed that mistake. They nailed it so well. So freaking well that it's it's just it's really good. Like <laughs> I laughed so freaking hard at this episode. Oh, I just can I just build a crap ton of beer on my on my crotch. That's always a good mistake to make. See, I can relate to this show because I make mistakes like this. So, wow. I have a puddle. I have a puddle of booze on me. Okay. Anyway. So yeah, the show is cool. Like, it's a fun premise and I laughed. But unfortunately, the only problem I have with it is that once the cat's out of the bag and she goes viral because everybody saw this other side of her and she's not the pure uh, waifu VTuber that they all thought she was, you know, they get they get this other side of her that's like way more real, and they want more of it because they think it's funny. So she goes viral, and then the rest of the episode, she she embraces that. She totally embraces it. But once the cat's out of the bag and she just starts acting like that on stream, I'm not exactly sure what the joke is at that point, because like I'm not sure what's gonna carry the rest of the show. It's not as funny. Her embracing that is not as funny as her accidentally being caught acting that way. So like. I'm not sure what the rest of the show is going to be about. That's going to be as funny. Like, I don't, I don't really know where it goes from there. Because you know, if it's not if it's not awkward for her anymore, then like, I'm not sure where the humor is going to come from. So like, the first half of the episode had me laughing my ass off, but then the rest of the episode is like, okay, but what now? Like, I don't know where they go from there. But uh, either way. The way this show depicts streaming culture is very freaking funny. Uh, the ASMR bit in particular just had me freaking laughing my ass off because uh, the way it homed in on a very specific ASMR, uh, a type of ASMR where it's it's ear cleaning. I'm like, oh god, this is this is just me. This is <laughs> this is just what I do: chugging beers, watching streams, and freaking listening to ASMR and then falling asleep and passing out. It's like. That, that's probably a lot of people. I'm pro probably not unique in that respect, but that's all the more reason why a lot of people probably find it as funny as I did, because it's really fucking funny. Um, so yeah, I, I liked it. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see if the rest of it ends up being as funny as the first episode, but you know, so far one episode aired, and it's here on Crunchyroll. Anyway, next up. Next up. The other show I watched tonight was Red Cat Ramen. Uh, this show, the best way to describe this show is it's basically just what would happen if you built an entire anime around the, the cute palico cats, the, those anthropomorphic cats that cook in the Monster Hunter games. If you just take those cats, put them in a ramen shop, uh, and they have one human assistant who is the protagonist of the show, he starts working there. That's basically the show. I mean, that's literally what it's about. And what I found surprising about this show is as, as kooky and hilarious as that premise sounds, uh, a, a bunch of cats running a ramen shop, and they are talking cats. I mean, they are talking anthropomorphic cats. Um, 
I, it, it's surprisingly dry. It's surprisingly dry and kind of like straightforward. Like it's very slice of life. It's very much if you've ever seen any other anime about like that's set in a restaurant or some kind of workplace. It's very cozy. It's very laid back. It's surprisingly not that silly, despite the premise. I mean, it still made me chuckle because I mean, it's a ramen shop run by a bunch of freaking cute cats. It's pretty freaking funny. Uh, one of them's a tiger. One of them just happens to be a freaking tiger, and that's funny. It's, just, it's also the shyest cat in the restaurant. Ward works in the back. It doesn't work in the front with the rest of the cats because it's the shy one, even though it's a tiger. So that's funny. Um, and this girl's job, the main character in the show, she shows up, she ends up working there as a new hire, and her most of her job just consists of, uh, of brushing the, 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 the shedding fur off the cats before they start working because they don't want the hair to get in the food <laughs> while they're cooking, which is very strange. I don't even know if it's a joke so much, it's just, it's the premise. Like, again... It's weirdly dry about all this stuff. So, like, as silly as it all sounds, the show plays it totally straight. So, like, yeah. Part of me wonders if it would have been better if they had just played it up as, like, a really goofy, absurd show with, like, lots of over-the-top gags. Because uh, the fact that it is such a cozy slice-of-life show, despite being so ridiculous in its concept makes me think that you know maybe they went a little too dry i don't know but i still found it amusing and fun i mean it's a cute show i probably will watch more of it just because it is a fun cute little show it's got some heart i guess but uh yeah i mean the the, the orange tabby on the front here he talks with like a gruff voice like he's a yakuza thug or something it's pretty freaking funny uh like, that, that alone is still funny, and it still made me kind of laugh. Even though, again, the show is not exactly a gag-heavy show. But, I liked it. I like it. It just reminded me of those freaking cats from Monster Hunter, and I guess that was enough to reel me in. So, yeah. Red Cat Ramen is good. I liked it. Oh, and then we have this insane show. <laughs> My dear friend, Nokotan. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this freaking show. Um, basically, what you have here is like, the complete opposite of Red Cat Ramen, whereas that was surprisingly grounded and dry. This show is absolutely absurd and insane. The humor is just off-the-wall bonkers. And it doesn't make a lick of sense. This show doesn't make any sense at all. From the first episode, anyway. I don't expect it to make more sense later on, either. Um, but that's not a knock against it, because I was highly entertained. In fact, out of all these five shows I've watched, this was probably my favorite, just because it was so stupid and so hilariously over the top. It goes so far with whatever gag this is supposed to be. And I think the only real central gag here is that this girl is a deer girl she has antlers and we don't know why she has antlers we don't know where she comes from what she's about but uh she's 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 a school student who just happens to have antlers and she meets this girl who's also a student in the same school who is uh she everybody thinks she's like a a, a, a an honorable class president who is like a, a grade a student does everything right but she's actually in her past, she's actually a, a super delinquent, a juvenile delinquent. So she doesn't want anybody to know that secret, but this dear girl somehow does know, just for reasons, I guess. And that's, that's just the basic plot. That's as close to a plot as you're going to get. Basically, this dear girl just drives this girl crazy for the whole episode, and there's lots of absolutely insane gags, uh, lots of visual weird shit. Uh, there's tons of CGI deer running around in the background all the time for no reason at all, just to add to the weirdness. And I guess because it ties into the fact that Nokota, the main character, has antlers and is a deer girl. That's it. That's as much logic as I can apply to this show. I'm trying my best to explain it. But this is definitely something you just have to watch. Just watch it. 
just watch this episode. There's one episode airing right now, and it's hilarious. It's very, very funny. I actually got stuck with the dub the first time I tried it out, because I thought it was only on Amazon, and they only had the dub. But you can also watch it uh, subbed here on Crunchyroll, so whichever you prefer. They're both fine, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, my dear friend Okatan is good. This might be, this might end up being the funniest, it has the potential to be the funniest anime of the year, if not to come along in a long while. So, um, yeah, really, really good. Then I watched something with a little romance in it. I watched this show called My Wife Has No Emotion. Which is, uh, is an interesting uh, show because it's about this dude who is single and he buys a robot maid to do the cooking for him because he works all the time. So it's one of those. Now there's been a lot of anime with that premise. There's been a lot of anime where a guy gets a robot maid or girlfriend or whatever, uh, like Chobits or whatever. But this is interesting because it treats it a lot more realistically. Like the robot girl in this show, Mina, I think her name was, uh, she comes off as an actual robot. Like it's treated very grounded and she behaves like one. Like she doesn't even open her mouth when she speaks. It's almost like a speaker. She's got these very cold eyes. Most of her body is metal. I mean, she looks, she, she just looks and acts like an actual robot. So it's almost like semi-believable this time around. And yet, uh, still surprisingly lighthearted. And I did laugh a fair bit, even though it was very natural comedy because there's, there's no real gags or anything. It plays itself very straight. And for the most part, it's exactly what I was kind of expecting. Like, he does end up having feelings for this robot girl, and she does possibly, potentially, seem to have some kind of feelings for him, even in the first episode. But we don't know for sure, because she's a robot, and he still thinks, oh, maybe it's a bug in her programming or something. It's one of those. It's one of those stories, I guess. You know, do, red, do robots dream of electric sheep or whatever. Is this girl, does she have some humanity deep down inside, or is she just an appliance? He even mentions in the show that she's a second-hand appliance. So, like, she's not even, like, a top-grade robot that he picked up. So, like, yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's kind of cute. There's lots of drinking involved. This dude gets wasted, and uh, she keeps telling him to drink water because she's a robot. Who's like programmed to care, I guess, about her owner. And that's funny. It's a funny scene. Actually, out of all these five anime I've been watching, half of them involve a lot of heavy drinking. And I have to say, I just want to say this. Uh, it's nice to see drunk representation in anime. It's nice to see us drunks getting properly represented. I just want to say that. Um, it's nice that most of these anime were also starring adults. I guess that helps, but... Still, I like to see the drunk representation, you know? I like to... We, we need more representation of, uh, you know, drunks like me. Uh, it's nice to see, you know? Drunk representation. You know, that's all I'm saying. You know, drunk lives matter. We do. So that's nice to see. And you definitely get a good drunk scene in this show. So, hey, it's worth watching for that. Uh, there's actually two episodes of this already aired, but I only watched the first one, so I guess we'll see if I if I find the rest of it as charming. Um, then we have the last show I watched this evening, Mayonaka Punch. Now I knew right away from like the opening intro that this was a PA Works show, and surely enough, it's from Studio PA Works. Uh, which always makes very pretty looking anime that have a certain gloss about them. And this show does have a nice look to it. It's one of the nicer looking shows out of all these I've watched. Uh, but the premise, uh, much like uh, the VTuber Girl one, involves streaming culture and uh, the internet, social media crap. It's the, the main character, the br br brunette chick over here, uh, 
did some crazy shit on a podcast with some fellow podcasters and she got canceled she got kicked off the podcast and now everybody on the internet hates her and she tries desperately throughout the episode to get her fame back or to like you know go off on her own and it just doesn't work out for her so one night she gets horribly drunk because again drunk representation man it's everywhere now i love to see it uh, and she stumbles upon an abandoned building where she meets a vampire so that, that's right that's the twist here there's a vampire girl there's a supernatural vampire girl who apparently has woken up from a 20 year sleep and is surprised to see things like smartphones or whatever and she, she uh ends up chasing this girl and she wants to suck her blood she really likes her and the girl strikes a deal with her and says okay you can do that but can you help me get to a million subscribers on my own personal channel because i think it would be really cool to do videos about podcast videos about a vampire and show people stuff they've never seen before so that's the premise of this show and uh frankly a lot happens in this episode there's a lot of like nice animation and character bits uh it did make me laugh a fair bit like a lot of these shows uh that i've watched today and uh i love vampires so that already goes it goes in there as a nice ingredient and uh yeah it's got potential it's got potential it definitely feels like the most busy out of all these shows in terms of premise because it feels like there's a lot going on. It's hard to know what the central thread of this show is going to be. If it's going to be more about a commentary on social streaming or about vampire girls. I don't know. I don't know what, uh, how that mix is going to play out in the long term. But I'm curious to see because it's cool. It seems like a well-produced slick little show. And PA Works, if nothing else, they always make very dazzling, fun-to-watch shows. So, there you go five new anime that i liked see sometimes i like them when they're not just another isekai show sometimes when they just have random deer girls uh that do funny things with cgi deer i i find it funny and that charms me or cats running ramen shops or girls getting drunk and falling asleep during their streams uh you know just that kind of stuff falling in love with robots these shows have it all, so yeah, I recommend them. Go check them out. Hopefully they stay good past their first episodes. This is just an impression video. It's not like these were reviews, all right? So don't come back to me later and say, well, Patch, if they get terrible later on, why did you re recommend these shows? Shut up. I just recommended the first episodes. They were my initial thoughts. Anyway, live for the passion. See you later.